Hello, this is Toby Jurovix, Chief Curator and Holland Curator of American Western Art. Welcome back to our virtual tour of American landscape paintings from the Jocelyn Art Museum. And again, I hope you and your family and friends are doing well and keeping busy. Today, we're going to look at Albert Bierstadt's Dawn at Donner Lake, which was painted in the early 1870s. Earlier, I mentioned that one of the things a landscape painting could tell us about was patronage, who paid for it. In this case, it's the central story, or more properly, the central Pacific story. Donner's summit is famous for two very different events. It overlooks where the Donner party was stranded in the winter of 1846. Trapped by deep snow, almost 40 members perished on their way to California. A little more than 20 years later, the Central Pacific Railroad crested the Sierra Nevada mountains at Donner Summit on its way to Utah to meet the Union Pacific and complete the Transcontinental Railroad. In an account from 1870, we see how quickly the lake's reputation had changed. Donner Lake, which is sometimes called the Gem of the Sierras, is situated on the very summit of the Sierra Nevada and forms one of those reservoirs of water which are derived from mountain springs and the melting snows and are very numerous in this range. They are always remarkable for their picturesque beauty. This lake is in full view from the railroad and the traveler can look down upon it as he is crossing the summit. In 1871, Collis P. Huntington, vice president of the Central Pacific Railroad, brought the renowned landscape painter Albert Bierstadt to Donner Summit to commission a painting commemorating Central Pacific's triumph over the snows and summits of the Sierra Nevada. Jocelyn's small canvas is the study for a final six by 10 foot painting which is now found in the New York Historical Society. But a lot can be learned from a sketch, including what it doesn't show. In this case, the railroad itself. Born in Germany, Bierstadt had traveled extensively in the American West and had made Yosemite Valley his artistic home. But here, he was tasked with celebrating not nature, but the triumph of industry, technology, and finance. Instead, Bierstadt captured the rising sun glinting off the lake with little hint of the railroad itself. Huntington is said to have rejected the initial painting, and in the final version, Bierstadt accommodated his patron. A review of the finished painting noted, The railroad, with its enveloping snowshed, is indicated plainly enough without any obtrusion of its ugliness. The puff of blue smoke that the train left as it plunged into a short tunnel suggesting with a touch of beauty all that is not seen. It is wonderful to think of that the railroad was ever laid along the face of this forbidding cliff.